Okay. So now that we've figured out the spring constant of the red spring using this equation that I just showed you a minute ago, you would think that there should be an equation like that that works for, sp that works for swing sets as well. And there is. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you about something else. I want, to I want you to notice, and, I, and, and I've said this before, but I'm going to kind of drive it home with this idea. If we were to set up a spring, just like we do with the red spring, with the mass hanging up and hanging on it, and we started bouncing up and down, and while it's bouncing, if we attach a little pencil on the back side of it, maybe a magic marker on the back side of it, and then we roll some paper past it, and as we roll this paper past it, as this goes up and down, it's going to draw on that piece of paper a sine curve. Very nicely. It's going to draw a perfect sine curve. And so, what I'm saying is, is that simple harmonic motion and cosine curves are the same thing. They go hand in hand. And so we can use these, we can use this idea to describe waves. And I'll show you more about that in a second. But first, let me talk about, let me remind you that swing sets, swinging on swings, see, this is why we call it simple harmonic motion. There's not, nothing more fun than just swinging on a swing. And the simple harmonic motion of a swing, the period of it, looks a lot like the equation for a spring. The only difference is, is that instead of an m and a k, we've got a length and the acceleration rate of gravity. And here's what this tells you. This tells you that the period of the swing set depends only on two things, which planet you're on and how long the string is. It does not depend on how big you are. If you're a big fat Bubba or a skinny tiny Sally Sue, it doesn't matter. It only matters the length of the rope. And so, uh, by the way, you should remember that the best swings are the ones that have a long period which means a long string, which are the exact ones that the lawyers get rid of, okay? But <clears throat> the best swings are the ones that have a long string. Why? Because that's the ones where you swing up really high. As you swing up really high, then you come back down, and you're going really fast at the bottom, then you swing up really high, and it takes a long time to go from one side to the other. Those are the best. They're hard to find. There are a few around. I had one in my backyard. It was a broke. That might be why the lawyers are getting rid of them. But anyway, next thing we need to talk about. <clears throat> we need to talk about waves. So first of all, what is a wave? Let me give you an example of a wave. I'm going to show you one here. I've got this spring attached to this, this thing over here. And I'm going to send a wave down the spring. So as I, as I send a wave down, I'm going to send a wave down the spring, and you can watch it. And as that wave goes down the spring, and it bounces back and forth, the question is, what is a wave? And so the answer is, a wave is just the motion of energy. So, or some people like to, instead of energy, this word should be a disturbance, a motion of a disturbance. So, but it's energy that travels down the spring. Notice the spring itself is not traveling but you can watch the energy travel through the spring. As it goes down the spring, you can see the energy going back and forth. It goes down the spring, and it hits the other side and bounces back. And it bounces back and forth and back and forth. So you can see energy going back and forth in the spring, but the spring itself is not traveling. This is manifest, you can see this when you're fishing, right? You're out there fishing, and you see the bobber out there, and the bobber's going up and down, and the waves are coming in, but the bobber's not coming in the bobber stays out there. Why? Because the water itself is not coming in. Only the wave is coming in. And the wave is just energy moving towards you. Now after it curls over, then, then the water itself starts moving. But before it curls over, as it's just these gentle swells, all that is is energy moving through the water. The water itself does not move. Now, <clears throat> so that's what a wave is. It's a movement of energy. It's the motion of energy through matter. There are two kinds of waves. Let me show you the first one. The first one is the one that I already showed you. It's called a transverse wave, and that's this one. As it travels down the wave, you can see it moving up and down. The other kind is a little bit different. It's called a longitudinal wave. And to show you this, I'm going to grab a piece of this, and now I want you to watch this. As I let this go, 
watch the part that's compressed. The compressed part is going to travel back and forth through here. Uh, that you can start to see it bounce up and down. But you got, we had two waves mixed together there, so I'm going to try to stop it here and show you the other one. Watch the compression as the compression travels back and forth. Let's do this. There you go, you can see the compression traveling back and forth. And so that's a longitudinal wave. So there's two types of waves that can go through matter. A transverse one that goes up and down, or a longitudinal one that goes back and forth. A, co a compression that travels through the wave, so it's a compressed... And by the way, waves that go up and down like this, ones that you're familiar with, these would be like water waves on the ocean. But waves that are like this, that travel like this, and you might say, I've never seen anything like that. You deal with it every day. These are sound waves. Sound waves travel like these, this. Sound waves are compressive, compressions in the air, followed by what's called a rarefraction here. It's stretched out. The air, when I, when I talk or when that speaker makes noise as it comes out of, your, out of your computer, it compresses the air, and then that compression leaves, and then it goes back, and expands the air. And so, the, so sound waves are a compression that travels followed by a, what's called a rarefaction that travels. Okay, so these are the types of waves. <clears throat> by the way, these look like sine curves, and indeed they are. These um, longitudinal waves are also sine curves, although they don't look like it as much. So let me give you an example of what it looks like. During the compressed part, it becomes more and more and more compressed, and then here it becomes more and more expanded. And so this would be not expanded or compressed. Up would be compressed, down would be expanded. So the amount of compression and the amount of expansion of, or stretch, it can be plotted, and when you do that, it plots out just like a sine curve. So these are all the same things. And so again, this is just plotted compression or density if we're talking about sound waves versus time. Okay? Uh, let's do an example. So, the position of simple harmonic, of an object in simple harmonic motion is plotted. So this could be a, a wave going down a spring. Now, notice the axes here. The axes on this are not position and time. This is y position. This is x position. So the vertical axis is measuring how high up the wave is, and this is measuring how far over the wave is. So this graph is a little bit different than the ones we've been looking at. And now, so, so when you're looking at these graphs, you've got to be sure to look at the axes. What are they labeled as? So now, it tells you this is plotted out as the wave travels down the spring. We've plotted out where it is, when. And the question is, <coughs> Its frequency is this, find 1, the amplitude, 2, the wavelength, 3, the period, and the speed of the wave as it travels down this string or spring. Okay? So we're going to figure this out. Let's write down what we know. We know the frequency that is given to us, 18 hertz. Okay? Now, the first thing it asks for is amplitude. So we need to find amplitude. So we're going to go over here, we're going to look at our graph, and we're going to see that this measurement is given to us. Now remember, I told you that from here to here, from here to the axis, this is the amplitude. Well, it gave you twice the amplitude. So the amplitude is just half of that. So 4.5. One, three. So the amplitude is easy. So the amplitude, we now have that. Amplitude is 4.13 centimeters. Okay? The next thing it asks for is the wavelength. Okay? So we're going to look at our picture again, and we're going to notice that it gives us a measurement from the top to the bottom. And it tells us that distance is 5.2 centimeters. But notice, from the top to the bottom is not a complete cycle. The wavelength is the length from the beginning to the from the beginning of one cycle to the beginning of the next cycle. So from here to here, this distance, not this time, the time.
time would be the period, but the distance, remember this axis is measured in position. This thing is the wavelength, and that's a Greek letter lambda, it's kind of equivalent to our L. The Greek letter lambda is what we use to talk about wavelength, and so this distance is going to be twice this distance, so it's going to be twice times 5.2, so that's going to be 10.4. So the wavelength, and I'm going to write over here wavelength, Wavelength, which we designate as lambda, is equal to 10.4 centimeters. Okay, so now the next question it asks, what is the period? Well, we don't need to get that off the graph. We were given the frequency. If we know the frequency, we have to remember that frequency is inverse of period. And we can send the period up there and the frequency down there, and we can get that the period is equal to the inverse of the frequency. So as long as we know this, then we know the other. So we can plug those numbers in, and when you do, you find out that the period is 0 0.556 seconds. Oh, sorry, there's one more zero in there. There we go, 0 0.0556 seconds. Okay, so the last question is, what is the speed of this wave? Now notice what we're talking about here. <clears throat> we're talking about a wave as we travel down the, down the spring. As it travels down, notice it goes up and then down. So we get this picture that looks like this. It's a wave that goes back and forth. And it's traveling back and forth down the spring. And we're asked, how fast does it move back and forth down the spring? Well, how are we going to figure that out? Well, there's one equation that I haven't given you yet, and you need to know it, and you just need to memorize it. And this holds true for all waves, whether we're talking about sound waves, water waves, light waves, waves on a spring, waves on a string, you name it. If it's a wave, this equation applies. It always, always works. The speed of a wave is always equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Always. This works every time. So now we know frequency, we know wavelength, we can get the speed, we just need to multiply these out. And so we can finally get that the, fre the speed is equal to the frequency, which is 18, and those are standard units, times the wavelength, which is not standard units, that's going to be 0.1040. When we multiply that out, didn't multiply it. that's going to be 18 times 0 0.104 is 1.872 meters per second. There we go. So, <clears throat> with this, this now tells you I've given you all the little tricks in here. You now know all the little tricks to figure out things about waves traveling down strings, or springs, or water, or air, or whatever. You know all the tricks. There's one more set of equations that we use when we're talking about waves that we can use to substitute for a Fantastic Four. And those equations I like to call the terrific trio. The terrific trio works like this. The position of the wave is equal to the amplitude of that wave times the cosine of the angular speed times the time. So this will tell you when you've got a wave and it's traveling down a spring, When you've got a wave and it's traveling back and forth, up and down a spring, you can figure out where it is given the amplitude and the angular speed and the time. And then once you know that, then you can also find the velocity. And then once you know that, you can also find the acceleration. And so if you've had calculus, you'll notice that this one is a derivative of this one. And this one is the derivative of that one.
there we go. That's the chapter in waves.